Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. April Madison. I am a Resolution Specialist 3 uh, with our Resolution Center here at the university, and I am the host for this session, which is Creating an Inclusive Online Learning Environment, The Journey of SCI 207. By joining us today, you acknowledge that this session is being recorded and will be shared with TLC-related materials. Microphones will be muted for this presentation, but we encourage you to post questions and comments in the chat that will be monitored. Also, we have enabled live transcription, and if you would like to use that, just click the show caption button on the bottom of your Zoom window. But now, I am pleased to introduce to you Jennifer Zauer, the Director of Learning Solutions, Dr. Allison Reef, Department Chair, and Mark Hanitka with Assistant Professor. Go ahead and take it away. Well, thank you so much for, for the introduction. And we are really excited to be here today to share about a journey that we had the privilege of going on together over last year, really in the year of 2023, with creating a, a course here at the University of Arizona Global Campus called Sci 207. So I am going to advance the slide and turn things over to my colleague, Allie Reed. Thanks, Jen. Um, we really couldn't resist sharing this course when we found out the topic of TLC would be belonging. So if you really think about what belonging means, it's an affinity for a place, a group, or a situation. So some words that might come to mind are acceptance, connection, integration, rapport, fellowship, partnership. And the last one I'm going to hit on that makes a lot of sense when you're talking about science is kinship. So kinship can be thought of in a sense of a web of social relationships that form an important part of lives of all humans in all societies. So we sought to create a kin kinship for our students so that they can create a sense of not just belonging, but also responsibility for the planet and to see how the ways in which they interact and belong with the planet affects all kinship groups locally and globally. So with Science 207, you can think about belonging and connections across multiple kinship groups. So first, there's the connection with self. So throughout the five weeks, our students look inward at themselves and the impact that they make on the planet. They measure their own footprint in different environmental topics and see what they can do to minim minimize their overall footprint. They also connect with the content. This is typically the only science course most of our students take at UAGC. We wanted to go beyond memorizing the periodic table because really how many of you know anything about that anymore? Uh, or thinking about complicated chemical reactions. We wanted content that was accessible and usable in their daily lives, something that could have a lasting impression on how they live their lives and belong to this world. We also have connections to peers. Students get a great chance to interact with and support each other through different elements and more so than they do in a typical course. They learn about each person's community and they interact with an external tool, which Mark will share about in a little bit. They also um, get a sense of belonging to the scientific community. They assume the role of scientist, perhaps a novice role, but a scientist no less. They learn about the scientific method, which is something that can be used broadly in everyday life. Um, students also get to join along in one instance, um, our faculty and our media team found themselves in a bit of a floodplain area after hurricane rain swept through the area. And they got to see how kind of things changed moment to moment as a, when you're a scientist and how you can deal with that. They also um, connect to the local and global community. We obviously wanted our students to learn about content, but we want, wanted them to take away a deep connection and sense of belonging to the world itself, as well as those who inhabit their world. For example, they study uh, rivers and water sources in their own areas and think about how they can apply global knowledge to their own environment. With that comes a responsibility to take care of the world. We wanted students to see the toll they take on their immediate as well as larger global communities through the Footprint Project, which Mark will share about in a little bit. So I'm gonna pass it back to Jen to introduce our next topic. 
Perfect. And I'm going to hold on just a second for advancing the slide, but we, you know, Allie and Mark and myself are just a few of the people who helped to make this, this course come to life. And really this course was the inspiration and the heart of our dear colleague, Clifford Blizzard. And, and there is just an amazing team behind the scenes who helped to take his vision and Mark's vision and bring it to life. And we really can't think of anyone better to help show you what to Psy 207 is all about than the team that helped to build this course. So I'm going to advance the slide and actually we're going to share a video that has the different team members who helped to create this course and build this course and bring the vision to life, explain the different elements that we brought in that really we think helped to capture how this course really gets at the heart of fostering a sense of belonging in learning. So here we go. As part of our university-wide initiative to look at the cost of student materials, an opportunity was presented to our team to redesign Side 207 by creating our first ever in-house virtual science lab. The creation of our own lab allowed us to drive the content, create varied and authentic opportunities for formative, summative, and reflective assessments that are clearly connected to our course learning outcomes, which support the specific needs of our students. We are excited for the faculty, designers, media team, accessibility consultant, and assessment specialists who developed the course to showcase this course. Well, there are benefits to physical laboratory kits. Virtual labs allow us to better serve our specific student population more effectively. Students can work on the formative lab assignments over multiple sessions and anywhere they can use their computer and access the internet. Here you can see all of the modules of the week two virtual lab activity are clearly linked and students are even provided with a completion checklist. This is particularly important for our military students stationed overseas and those who travel frequently for work. The virtual labs allow us to provide more integrated scaffolding and support throughout the lab activities. With physical labs, students often reported feeling stuck or confused about how to proceed. Feedback on the new virtual labs indicates that students rarely feel stuck and feel more engaged with the course concepts. Each lab activity is scaffolded by learning materials and interactive modules that provide essential background information on the topics and concepts that students will explore during the lab activity. Knowledge check quizzes help students assess their understanding of the information throughout the lab activities. After completing the labs, students are asked to contextualize what they learned within real world applications and their own local environmental issues. Students research various environmental conditions and challenges in their own area to better understand the applications of the course learning objectives to their own lives. Four of the virtual lab assignments were created in-house, but for the week four laboratory, an outside climate policy modeling tool called En-ROADS was utilized. The amount of scholarly research and coding that went into creating this climate mitigation policy simulation tool is beyond what most institutions could feasibly create on the, their own. En-ROADS was specifically created to bring state-of-the-art climate modeling to educational settings for free. Our course development team even developed a fully ADA-compliant alternative using data directly from the En-ROADS model. One of the things that we did when we were creating the media for the course was we made sure to keep ADA concerns in mind from the very beginning. So along with the closed captioning and the transcripts, that we include normally with every course, uh, we also made sure to take extra steps to ensure that learners with with needs could participate uh, as much as possible. So for example, in the potassium testing part of one of the labs, we provide multiple views so that learners could see the full view, a close up and a clearly labeled drop indicator. So that makes it where anybody that can see but maybe can't quite see what's going on in the other views can get an obvious view of when those drops are coming in so that they can count them. Uh, we also included a drop sound effect for learners who would rely solely on audio. Another thing that we made sure to do is we incorporated many different types of learning materials and that allowed us to cater to our diverse learners in a way that we could not otherwise achieve. And that's really important for very uh, diverse learners. I learn better visually and so do many other people and some people learn better with text, et cetera, et cetera. So we made sure to provide as much as possible. We give text, video, worksheets, photographs, and learning interactives. And the diversity in these materials helped us also to break that content into digestible chunks that just makes it easier for learning uh, in general. 
one of the great achievements that we did in the Site 207 media and the design of the course as a whole is incorporating storytelling techniques that serve to engross learners into the world of science. And we do this by not just having the learners do the science, but they become a scientist engaging in a simulation of what they would do as a field scientist in a community. And this is not only reflected in how we wrote the scripts and, and how we introduced the modules and everything else, but it's it's reflected in the production quality level that we worked very hard to achieve and, and also the overall design aesthetics. And the last aspect that I'll talk about with the media production is that we, we were able to take uh, production issues that were completely outside of our control and we turned them into teachable moments for our learners. We didn't just give up. So for example, when there was a hurricane uh, that happened in Georgia, right when we were going out to go do our testing and everything else, we used that um, to teach them about how flooding and other conditions can occur in real life, what that looks like, and and essentially how to deal with them and, and what that means for, for a scientist. In our Canvas setup and design, the goal was to maintain a consistent look and feel across weekly modules to create an inclusive environment. Once students are familiar with week one, they will be able to confidently navigate through remaining weekly learning activities and information either through the course home links or through the modules navigation. This allows for focus on the content for learning outcomes instead of the navigation of the course. For example, let's take a look at the weeks one, two, and three lab landing pages. The weeks one, two, and three landing pages have the same setup so that students are able to see exactly what's going to be needed from them in these activities. Part one and part two. Each one has the laboratory activities or the experiments, the modules, and then they would have a lab follow-up assignment. Again, once we click on these clear directions, we are taken to another page where students are quickly able to see what they need to do to get ready, how they're gonna explore and learn more about their learning outcomes, what the modules will be, and then how to complete their lab worksheet, which is the graded assignment for this piece. As you can see also at the bottom of the page, we have included links to go back to the week one lab page, just in case someone needs to go back to find out what they need to do next. Another design feature included to ease navigation and allow focus to be on the laboratory objectives, we made sure to include specific directives and visuals for complete access to the curriculum. This was designed to alleviate and support students. See the progress bar at the top. This allows students to see how far they have gotten and how far they still need to go to complete this lab. And then at the bottom, we also have specific directives on what they need to do after this page and where to go next, along with a navigation link to return to the laboratory activities page. Once students have completed all lab activities and modules, they are greeted with a congratulatory message and a final summary checklist items to complete each lab. With this intentional design, students can feel prepared, empowered, and most of all supported to feel successful. At UAGC, accessibility is a top priority as seen in Science 207 and all courses. For this course, we concentrated on three key accessibility areas to ensure that everyone can fully participate in the course. In planning and executing the course, we adhere to the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, known as WCAG 2.1 AA, also Section 508, and 88 standards. We conducted manual accessibility testing. We also use web testing tools such as Axe Development Tools to verify compliance. If an item did not meet accessibility standards, as in this example, we collaborated as a team to imply universal design principles and offer flexible learning options. This approach ensured that both students and faculty could participate without barriers with alternative course materials provided when necessary. This process included creating accessible digital content by ensuring proper use of headings, list, alternative text for images, logical reading order, and proper tagging of PDFs. Critical aspect of creating accessible content is the careful planning, construction, and organization of documents so that adaptive technologies can accurately interpret the content. Another focus area was providing alternative course materials, formats, and flexible learning out options to accommodate diverse needs and different learning styles. 
staying up to date with emerging technologies and accessibility standards is essential. In this course, we offer flexible learning options and alternative assignments to ensure equivalent learning opportunities for all. This allows us to bridge the gap between innovation and accessibility by creating and providing equivalent alternative assignments, such as this example, when necessary. And this is an example of a text-based alternative. The final accessibility area of focus was designing and testing for device adaptability, including the use of adaptive technologies to access all course materials. This ensures a consistent user-friendly experience across various devices, such as tablets and phones. This also includes text-to-speech applications, screen and braille readers, keyboard filters, and touch screens. In today's fast-paced world, more devices are being used to access course material. And our goal was to ensure that all course content is accessible through adaptive technologies and mobile applications. Accessibility was thoroughly integrated into every phase of the course development process, planning, execution, and final testing ensuring a barrier-free environment for all students and faculty. Due to the content of the course, certain discussion forums do not use the standard rubrics with generic verbiage. Three custom discussion rubrics were created to provide clear guidelines and criteria for what was expected of the students throughout the weeks. One explores important terms from the readings while relating them to life and careers. Week five here is a creative assignment about the student's experience and it uses a discussion formatted rubric that enables them to share work and engage with each other. This discussion addresses the week's topics using the TriCider application. These custom rubrics allow faculty to easily evaluate the discussions better while clarifying how students are awarded points for each task. Two forms of assignment rubrics were created. The grading rubric preview link is located at the bottom of the instructions, and these criteria clearly explain what the students are graded on. Journal assignments allow students to track their progress within the course and reflect on concepts and processes throughout each week. The formative assignments are follow-ups to the lab work completed in weeks one through four and involve submitting worksheets about the labs and an essay about the week's content. And looking at the week five here, the criteria in the summative assignment are developed in a way so students propose components of a plan that demonstrate their learning and achieve mastery of the content in the course. These written assignments are assessed using an internal rubric tool called Waypoint Outcomes. The Science 207 Course Learning Outcomes, Scientific Reasoning General Education Learning Outcomes, and Institutional Learning Outcomes, or ILOs, are mapped to the rubric criteria here, and all of the outcome data is centralized to evaluate student learning. The learning outcome mapping allows the university to assess data on student performance and help target specific information that can be used to develop any data-driven improvements in the future. Thank you all for the opportunity to showcase our course through the voices of the development team who created a learning experience that is engaging, intuitive, purposeful, and most of all, empowering students to succeed. As we close, we wanted to share an actual product from this course. The Lab in the Final Week is a nature experience that asks students to spend a quiet, contemplative hour outside in nature. They then record their experiences and choose a creative means to share their nature experience and what they learn from it. This could be a series of photographs, a poem, essay, artwork, board game, video, or any other creative avenue they can think of. Here is a song a student wrote and performed. We hope you enjoy it as much as we have. I feel the wind press against my cheeks. And I feel the cold ground under my feet. I wonder where in this place I would be If 
I was living more naturally. And I watch the sun as it makes its rise. And I wonder when it will become our demise And why can't everything be as simple as this Cause Mother Nature, your unending bliss We're going to go ahead and pause there and we can certainly share the link to the video as a whole, but you can see just the impact that this course has had from all of the different voices that we brought in to help make it the, the course that it is. And I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Mark to dig in a little bit deeper. Thank you, Jen. As part of our oh. university, why? Well, there hmm. we go. There we go. So just to clarify a little bit more for people not familiar with this outside uh, tool called TriCider, it's a group brainstorming website and it's uh, free to use. You, you basically set up the TriCider page and it creates a unique link. And in this course, we use it in three weeks of the discussion, the weeks two, three, and four. And um, we, we create this, uh, this city called Arzaville and it's, there's a number of different versions that are based on real cities. And we ask students to consider all of the characteristics of Arzaville and then as a, as a class brainstorm ideas to make Arzaville more environmentally sustainable, environmentally friendly relative to the topics of that week. So week two is about agriculture and food systems. Week three is about water issues of all kinds. And week four is about energy use uh, and climate change impact. So the instructor sets it up and then students post their ideas and then they're interacting in a more maybe organic way than, than our discussion boards, traditional discussions board, boards sometimes allow. So students are posting ideas and then they post pros and cons to their peers' ideas and there are certain quantity requirements and quality requirements. And then towards the end of the learning week, they vote on what they think are the top ideas. So students collaboratively work together to create this plan. And then by the end of the week, they can see these ideas that have risen to the top that they've created together and, and you know, kind of hashed out the, the benefits and the, the costs and the challenges associated with each idea. Um, and we found very, we've had very good feedback from students about this discussion format. So it just, and it, I, we th really think that it builds a lot of community and this, this back and forth interaction, brainstorming activity. Um, if you could advance slide. And then the other project that had been mentioned briefly, and this is a course long project that students are sharing in a discussion board. And they're also, they're going through the same process, but they're, they're tailoring it to their own lives. So each student takes three different uh, environmental footprint measurements, a general one that's about land use and resource consumption, one that's specifically about water use issues, and one that's specifically about climate change. And then each student chooses five actions or habit changes that they're going to work on throughout the five weeks of the course. And each week they self-reflect and report on their progress challenges in their weekly journal and then at the end of the course, they share their starting numbers of their climate impact and environmental impact, and then they, their after numbers with the class, and they interact with each other on the discussion board, sharing like what challenges they experienced, what things went well, you know, what they learned from the experience. So everybody was doing things in their own life, and some students were doing very similar actions, and then they were communicating about this shared experience that they had uh, through the discussion board. So we think that this, again, from feedback from students, created this sense of ongoing project and a sense of belonging and working together, each each student making a, maybe a small impact, but then collectively as, as the class, they can see that it adds up. And then you imagine over like hundreds or thousands of courses and and then the further impact that these students have when they share this information with their family, with their friends, their coworkers, their neighbors. And, uh, you know, we just think it's a, a really special part of this class. Next slide, Jen. Ah, and then, yes, just briefly, these are some picture highlights from our lab development course. And um, this was mainly uh, the, the planning was orchestrated by our late colleague and, and course lead, 
uh, Clifford Blizzard in, in his own community. And we worked with the Rodale Institute. If you've uh, heard of that, they're big in organic and sustainable agriculture. They were so generous to host us at their South East, Southwest Research Center uh, in Chattahoochee Hills. And they, we used their land for the soil testing and we used uh, their lab area to do the tests. And, you know, we worked with them. We acknowledged their, uh, you know, participation and contribution. And then Clifford also reached out to landowners and uh, local government to get permission to do the water quality testing in a creek that went all the way from almost a headwaters situation all the way into the Chattahoochee River, which is the, the really large river, uh, one of the large rivers in the Atlanta, Georgia area. So we really had this focus of connecting the science to place. And then, again, as students went through these experiences, then through the reflective paper assignment after they did the labs, we asked them to connect this information to their own place, have an, a sense of belonging in their own community and understand the environmental challenges and issues that are going on there and how they can get involved and, you know, maybe figure out that these things are important to them. Um, next slide. Yeah, we just want to special thanks to the entire team. Uh, Dr. Clifford Blizzard, uh, who was the course lead uh, subject matter expert uh, in memoriam. Uh, unfortunately, we, we suddenly and unexpectedly lost Clifford uh, in uh, February yeah, of this year. Um, myself, I was a subject matter expert. Jen Zauer, Dr. Ali Reef, uh, consulting review editing. Dan use multimedia learning interactive video production. Dwayne use multimedia video production and editing. Uh, Lisa Geiger uh, did the wonderful canvas build and layout and organization. Renee Stewart, uh, CLO, WO alignment, rubric development, making sure all that uh, lined up properly. And then Stacy Gresnick, who did a great job reviewing and providing suggestions and, and helping us go through the whole ADA process. And I know we're, we ran a little tight on time. We'd love to hear if, you know, you have uh, other examples or ways that you've used technology and course design to uh, help foster a sense of belonging in your own courses. Um, and I guess if we have the ability, we could open up uh, microphones or if people want to share in chat. But thank you so much for coming to our discussion and, and seeing just a little bit of a taste of why we think uh, Science 207 and, and this revision of it was so special and, and creates a sense of belonging for our students. Thank you. Did you see any questions? I did not. I think we answered them all as we went along, which is nice to be multiple presenters. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see any questions that left unanswered. There was a lot of comments and everything. So hopefully you guys can capture those comments that are in there um, for your own personal use. Um, I, I don't have a question per se, but I just wanted to read a quote Clifford and I presented on this uh, nature experiences in, in, in Savannah, Georgia. And just we have a, I wanted to share a PowerPoint uh, of that presentation, but I can't figure out how to do it on my phone here. I'm still working on it. If anybody wants that, I'll just email me. This is I'm Chris Foster. I'm happy to um, send it to you. Here's a quote from a student. I feel a part of nature in a way that I've never felt before. I'm conscious of my actions and how they affect my environment. Changing habits may be challenging, but I'm not just interested, but I'm committed to reducing my ecological footprint in hopes of making this world a better place for my grandchildren. That's just one of so many student comments that's indicative of the transformative power of this course. Thank you for this awesome presentation. Thanks, Thank Chris. you, Chris. We did, uh, we did do some research uh, related to the course and outcomes. Uh, Clifford and I had done a big survey effort of, of former students and we actually saw really amazing results of students who continued to work and be concerned about these environmental issues, continued to work on reducing their environmental footprint 
up to six years. Six years was like how long the that version of the course had been going. And some students reported, I think it was like 20 to 30 percent of the, the survey respondents said that they were still doing some of the actions or all of the actions that they had started during the course. Um, and yeah, a lot of students, we were just really surprised that a lot of students remembered the course, they remembered this project, um, and it seemed to have a, a lasting impact. So that was positive. Go on, enjoy your next session, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so before you guys leave, just I want to say thank you to Mark, Allison, and Jen for this presentation and thank the audience for your participation today. Please use the survey link that's in the chat. Um, that way you can nominate TLC presentations for conference awards and share your feedback on this presentation. And you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Have a wonderful TLC. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.